support in the front of there. It started off slowly, but I built, uh, built some momentum. Uh, good evening. Obviously, I'm uh, Scott Keel, President of Audi of America, and it's an absolute pleasure to have you all with us. Uh, as many of you know, it's been a uh, rocket ship uh, of a year so far, from Detroit to CES to the Super Bowl to launching the Q7 to having 1,300 Audi of America employees in dealerships in Austin last week for a, uh, I'll call it an Austin revival meeting. And of course, not bad, another record January, another record February. So we're off to a good start. Uh, I think the other thing, of course, uh, the PR colleagues always make me feel great. Just before I'm about to go on, they say, these are product journalists. They don't want to hear any business news. They don't want to hear anything else. So uh, with that warm welcome, I will tell you some business news and uh, I'll fight through this thing. So I think the first thing, obviously, uh, last year, 202,202 units. Uh, that was our sixth consecutive record year of sales. Uh, we doubled sales uh, in the last five years. And as I mentioned, 62 straight months of the sales record. So clearly luck is one thing, but you need to have a pretty decent brand with a pretty decent plan to get 62 straight months. And uh, I think to take a look at this graphically, I think it really tells the story. Many of you know, we entered 1969, 1970. It took us 40 years to sell 100,000 cars in America. I think many of you know the trials and tribulations we've had in this fantastic country. But then fast forward, just five years later, we doubled our sales to 202,000 years. So the strength that Audi is having in the marketplace is having a massive impact, which is obviously quite fantastic. Now, what we don't want to do is spend too much time celebrating history lessons, because obviously what we want to do is move forward. And I think what you need to move forward is a very strong foundation. The first thing of a very strong foundation is to have an extremely high quality automobile. And uh, believe me, I can remember starting with Audi in 2006. I can remember the 2007 Consumer Reports. And I can remember quite vividly, not one single Audi was recommended. Consumer Reports said, don't buy an Audi. This is a dramatic transformation. Number one brand overall recommended 100% every single car that they tested. So this is a testament to the quality. I think a lot of you experience it obviously firsthand when you're driving our cars. The second thing I live to, which was just as difficult as that, is if someone wanted to go buy an Audi and you were cross shopping a luxury car, we were number seven on the cross shop list. So you can imagine how brutal it is to try to sell something when a customer says, no, I prefer this, 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 this. And when they get the number seven, and the simplest way when I was in a marketing job was like going to a restaurant. You can imagine going to a list of entrees and saying, I want this, this, this. And either they don't have it or there's some issue. By the time you bloody get the number seven of anything, it better be free, it better be two for one, or it better be something really fantastic. Clearly, we got ourselves in the right place. I think the other thing is overall consideration. If you can imagine, we had 39% consideration of people buying luxury cars. This gray box here is the luxury average. So we had less consideration than Volvo, less consideration than Jaguar, less consideration than Acura, less consideration than Infinity, and significantly less than Lexus. They were up at 71% of the market, gave them the day for it. We had 39. So to me, it's no surprise we were selling 70, 80,000 cars. When you have that type of consideration, now we're number two in consideration at the end of 2015. The real reason we like this is, of course, with this kind of demand, it allows us to hold some pricing power. We spend about $2,000 less on incentives than our other German competitors, and this obviously is a good thing for business and, uh, and, uh, and moving forward. The other big story worth telling, obviously, without a doubt, is the dealer investment. A product is one thing, but a product means to have a proper home. Our dealers have invested $1 billion through this year, they have another billion dollars on the table through 2020. So that's two billion dollars of not our investment, their investment in building these terminals and building these facilities. The simplest reason they're doing this investment, Audi has now the most valuable franchise. We're tied up there with Lexus and we're tied up there with Porsche. Blue Sky, as you know, is basically the multiple on earnings and we have about a seven to eight times earnings. That's just the Blue Sky value, of course, does include the asset, the real estate, the building, whatever inventory you're taking. So this is the true powerful story of Audi, why dealers are continuing to invest. The other thing we like, and of course you start to look to the future, you have to look at demographics. Clearly demographics do not lie, but an astounding statistic in 
10, 9, 10 short years, 75% of every luxury car that's being sold is going to be purchased by a millennial. This is a huge transformation from where we are today. Clearly why this means a lot to us is we are the number one brand amongst millennials. All of that work we've been doing that I just shared with you, this brand that's high tech, this brand that's cool, this brand that's the car of Iron Man and all the things that we've done has had a, a massive impact. Now as you know, boomers have historically run the luxury segment. If you look at when we came of age and the struggles that we had as a brand, we didn't have as much impact on that generation, but clearly on millennials we are. So this gives us obviously an extremely bright future. The other thing I think is worth noting is if you look at the luxury segment, and I know you drive thousands of luxury cars and all sorts of coupes and all sorts of roadsters and all sorts of exotics, but the entire luxury segment, 72% of every car sold sits in four very simple segments. And the simple math that we know, if you want to sell cars, you have to succeed in these segments and then you can go off and do all the fantastic niche work that you want to do. So the single largest segment is the car you are going to be driving tomorrow. Obviously we call it the B sedan. That's where the A4 sits, it's where the C-Class sits, it's where the 3 Series sits, it's where the IS and ES and cars like that sit. But it sells nearly 443,000 cars a year. It's 24% of the entire luxury segment. So clearly this car is crucial. The other big one, of course, is, wouldn't be surprised, and growing rapidly is the SUV portion of that. Of course, that's our Q5 going up against the next three, going up against the GLK, now a GLC. And uh, you know the other vehicles. Of course, in the C, this is our A6, about 9% of the market. And then, of course, the C SUV, that's our Q7, going up against, you said you forget it, it was an ML, and now it's a, uh, GLE, thank you, and of course the X5. The reason is this car, Q7, brand new vehicle launched in January, and now launching shortly is going to be the brand new A4. So in about 42, 44% of the market, we are launching brand new products. And as you all know, the new factory in San Jose, Chiapa, we're going to be bringing the new Q5, so we will have all fresh products coming into these big segments, which is crucial. I think another thing worth noting, if you look at the 200,000 cars we sold last year, we did it with the oldest portfolio, over five years average age of our portfolio. So it's good when you can get that growth with older cars. It would be great to get it with the new cars that we're launching here. The other thing is you look at this, of course you all know A4 has been the heart and soul of Audi. If you look at going back generations, nearly 40% of every Audi sold was an A4. Now, of course, with the emergence of SUVs, this is diversifying, but clearly it is still the number one segment, despite the SUVs, and it is still the heart and soul of Audi, which is why this V9 would be absolutely crucial for our brand moving forward. As we look at the product itself, I think it's no surprise, but what makes me so excited is the brand I just told you about, and all the strengths and momentum of the brand, now going to marry with the absolute by far best A4, most competitive A4 we ever put on the marketplace, in my opinion, by a long shot. Best horsepower, best technology, best driver assist systems. We'll let you be the judge of the driving dynamics, obviously exterior design, and without a doubt, Phil will tell you more about the most connected car in the industry. I mean, look at the millennials and look at what they're looking for. We think this is the right car from the right brand, the right target group at the right time, which gives us a lot of upside with this vehicle. Now, as we look to position this car, I think this says a lot. You know, why wasn't Audi this nice, understated professors and intellects and architects and trying to make our way in the world? You know, it's tough to make your way in the world when this is the kings of the world at that time. But if you look at what's happening in America today, and it's been going on obviously for a long time, the king is intelligence. It's not about who's the jock. It's not about the leather jacket. It's not about the nonsense. It's about are you smart? Are you bringing some intelligence to the table? And whether it's Bezos or Charles Sandberg or uh, of course Tony Cook, these are the icons. And this fits bloody perfectly without it. We're a brand that's always been about understatement. We're a brand that's always been about intelligence. We're a brand that's always been about bringing something to the table, not just noise, 
but bringing real substance to the table. That's why our brand is so right. That's why we think this car is so right with everything that's happening culturally in America. This is the tagline for the new vehicle. Intelligence speaks for itself. And I think when you drive a car, this thing is some proper rock and roll. Absolutely best driving dynamics we've ever put in this segment before. So thank you very much for your time.